Hi friends, I wanted to um, come on to do a video on how I made a piece of cardboard into a little piece of art, um, recycled cardboard, and this is how it turned out. I could mount it onto a canvas and all that kind of stuff, but I thought this piece right here is just a little fun piece. Um, and I painted um, this in Stream with Nikki Parr, and I will go through what I've done. I won't paint the same picture, but I will just show you guys kind of how I made this kind of, of a piece. So, I'm going to start off with a piece of cardboard. I didn't even um, cut it properly or measure. So I'm keeping all these pieces too because I kind of use those scraps. And I um, start off by peeling a little bit of cardboard just to get some texture. I don't want to do too much. You see, I feel like I'm doing a little too much here coming off, but that's okay. I just don't want to have the ridge everywhere on here. I find that sometimes when I want these ridges to pop up, I will just go like this with a pencil and kind of make them pop up a bit where I'm clearing it off. Okay, so now I got this all kind of ripped up. I like the way it looks, and I'm going to collage a little bit of book paper in there using just some glue. This is not even really watered down glue, it's kind of cheaper PVA glue from Walmart. Um, some kind of just craft glue that they sold there. I found it very thin, so I didn't have to add any water to it. So it's good for collaging and that kind of thing because it dries nice and clear and I could throw whatever I want in there. So I just have some book paper just to have a little bit of background. On my other one, nothing showed for words and that kind of thing. And but and it's okay. Um, sometimes you want to do something like this and you want some book paper showing, depending on your mood, I suppose, at the time of your crafting. Um, I kind of like to do this thinking like with the the in mind like kind of like a little bit of a, a journal page or whatever however you'd want to do a journal page this is kind of how you could do this into a little canvas type of thing um, you start with a, a little base um, color and then decide what you want to paint at that moment and um, yeah, at any other time there, I was like, oh, I want to do, um, I just finished watching um, one of the Marvel movies, not one with um, Iron Man, but one of them, and it inspired me to do one character, and uh, yeah, this is where I went with that one. We'll see, I'm not sure where I'm going to go with this one. So, just playing around, but I do like just kind of randomly sticking paper down. I like where it's like the most written um, and I like the different text like this one has um, kind of different slight texts on there right so I really like that and I hope you guys can see and I like the yellowing of the pages, but like I said before, it does it does it doesn't matter what kind of you're going to be covering it up anyway too, but maybe not all of it. So the reason why I kept some of these pages that I, paper that I ripped off is because maybe I want to add a little bit more back up what I put there, add a little bit more of the cardboard look in back into it, and that's what I've decided to do here, just to play around layers it gives it a cute little look
and more texture. And I can go over and even add more paper on top. It's all up to what I'm feeling at that second. There we go, there's our base. Another thing that I found that I really liked, and I'm hoping I'm not too close now, is adding string to my project. So what I'm going to do is add a bit of string. I, with the last canvas just wrapped around to have a really cool texture. So I do have my glue on there still and and I'm just going to add a little bit more glue to hold that down. It gives it a um, really nice texture. looks very cool at the end. So, um, there we go. I used black string before. It doesn't matter what kind of color you use. Um, you're going to add whatever you want to this project anyway. So I think I'm going to pull, let's try to separate some of this here. And you can back this up with cardstock on the back too to keep everything, to make it look nice. It doesn't uh, come apart at all, but if you want to cover up all the string in the back. I'm putting a lot of glue on here, but I'm going to really get it into the background here. And then add, dry it off and then add some paint to kind of back it up a bit. Depending on what you want to do, if you just want to do like a little floral scene or anything like that, you can do whatever you like. But that's how I like to, that's how I did my last one. So, and then I just pulled the pieces that came, that I tied from the beginning, you know, started wrapping in here, and it's just so random. I add the glue everywhere, kind of, so then my paint is also not just soaking into the cardboard. Um, and then it's yeah I'm not wasting any paint that kind of thing just soaking it up into the cardboard cardboard is very porous like a canvas is um, got a gesso on it so it doesn't soak right through into the canvas okay so now what I'm doing is I'm going to actually add a little bit more um, texture with some uh, hitting my camera, my glue bottles right behind here, with some paper napkin that I separated. I'm just going to go over the string. I Last time I went like under the string with some painted um, clean, clean up uh, paper towel, but you can do whatever. So just to have a different fabric texture. I thought it would be really fun to add some of this. Now I have my little canvas up, so I'm going to see, I tend to be able to um, paint better with it up, so we'll see if I can do the video that way, leaning up. I done, I've done it before, so we'll see how great of a video it is. It does. It works. How how it, it works well enough. So I'm just adding this texture, really. So it's a paper napkin. And I am really close. I'm trying to figure out better ways to hold. Uh, get my camera up and stuff and see. This different particular webcam, I was not getting the same zoom as I was getting my old one. And my old one's just not, the quality's not there for you guys to see anything. It's too blurry. So I have not figured out how to zoom in and out. Only just moving my camera closer. It's the only way it seems that it works for me. So, for now, until I figure that out. Isn't that pretty? 
So this is what I'm going to do here, and then I'm just going to, um, I'm actually going to leave these pieces till later decide if I'm going to cut them off or not, because I think they look pretty cool on there. I might add one more piece up here, and I think we're done. I'm kind of liking the piece. Now my last painting, I did like cover the whole thing in a, a buttermilk, and um, this time I'm going to be a little bit more purposeful on not covering it all up. I think I'm just going to want to have some of this peeking through my painting, I'm hoping. Well, I'm going to lie and add a little bit more right here. Right there, I think it's pretty. Okay. That is my glue. Okay, so now I have this all ready. I think, um, I think I'll just go ahead and do my different reddish type of background I'm going to do for this guy. The last time I did like a lot of white, I'm not sure if I want to do the white. Um, so what I'm going to do is just kind of play with it here. Um, but you can start off, like I used the white as if it was a gesso on my last one. But, um, yeah, you don't have to do that. I'm, in fact, I'm actually thinking I'm going to go a little higher. And I can correct anything with whatever afterwards, like whatever paint. I'm just kind of using this as my blocking my colors. And I'm going to add uh, whatever I want afterwards here. I'm going in with my reds. So... All I know is that I have um, some spaces here that I don't want to get, and um, yeah, because I want to leave the eyes kind of free. This doesn't have to be perfect yet, I'm just kind of blocking out what I want. Could be a little bit bigger maybe. Of course, he's not shaped properly, but it is what it is. Okay, so I'm just going to hold my canvas. It's just leaning up against my bottle here, but uh, let's hold this here and just easy peasy. God, God, guess who this is already? And this is my first a bit of a layers here. So I think I'm going to grab some purples and stuff for this guy. And oranges maybe. I'm going to really add some colors like as if there's um, lots of maybe sunlight or something on 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 him or something. So I'm going to go grab my I'm going to grab my school bus yellow, throw that in here. And I probably don't need orange because I got the red and everything else. So let's just play with my colors. Just trying. It's, this is a lot right now, the yellow that I'm having here, but we're just playing with it. And I might want to get a purple color out. This is kind of naphoretted. Maybe I'll just add a bit of a blue to make a purple. Get all my colors kind of. That's a lot of blue. <laughs> Get my colors kind of mixed in there. And this is how it's going to come out yet. I still have lots of... I think I'm going to throw in different colors in there too, but for now, this is how I'm working it. 
I might add, I'm not really sure, I just might. A little bit. Kind of. <laughs> Add a piece of cardboard in the bottom here. I'm not getting my. I'm going to go a little bit more bluey here, even though just I could add more color or a red to it or something after if I don't like it. And this is very um, this is very abstract right now. I don't know how much I'm going to pull it together to what, you know, being not abstract. I don't know the word I'm trying to think. I'm just going to play with it, see how I feel. I could pull it more um, realistic. That's the word maybe I'm looking for. Or I decide just to leave it quite abstract. Okay, so I think I'm going to do with this one here is I am going to um, speed through this because this could take a little while and this is a lot of just adding, adding and adding to get it to where I'm happy with this, with this guy. Okay, so I'm going to keep going but uh, speed it through like about four times. Um, so I thought I'd do a voiceover on this part here. I am using a lot of different colors here and layering and um, I'll hardly rinsing my brush off. So the dark um, color of red is, um, I believe I was using a dark scarlet and um, this blue here is a uh, a bit of true blue. I, I added white. I was trying to get um, a shadow happening and I wasn't really feeling it so I mixed a lot of different colors for that side. There's a blue, blue greens. Um, I did at one point put like an arbor green and then I just went with true green, green I believe. Um, actually a uh, festive green. Um, but I really was trying to get the mixed um, lighting and colors and abstract look so the darker blue green stuff was on that one side and the brighter oranges and reds towards the other side so and um, yeah getting the eyes I was just really putting it on like mascara I was just really uh, was it mascara or eyeliner just totally splashing it on and making it thick so I really just wanted the eyes to pop of course I had to go over some of the stuff and then I go over the eyes again and make them thicker and make some drip marks on it but um, that's the kind of stuff you add at the end here um, just trying to get the shape I was going to go over all of this part here in marker but decided to do some paint which was wor worked really well because my marker wasn't working too good and I think the paint gave it a good look um, I really wanted that splashy paintery look too and it was a messy and it wasn't perfect and it was a really fun um, look to it. Uh, if I were to do like a really precise Spider-Man of course the lines would be a lot more crisp and clear and I'd have to use like a better fine liner and, and all that kind of stuff but this was more of a loose um, abstract and it really worked well. Um, also to putting in the paint at this time even the thick parts there I was like had to fix that I knew I was adding color to it in the insides and I'm making it um, like kind of going over some of the thick lines and adding to it because um, the really important part to this particular one was just all the layers of colors and hopefully lots of colors were popping through and uh, that's where I was going with this one. So um, for the most part I really liked using this very thin um, brush that I was using which is a number 5 or uh, 5-0 uh, brush very thin and actually I think this is one I usually use for my modeling but um, 
I, I've been using this one for some of my finer lines. Um, it's not like an expensive brush, but uh, I'm not leaving it in the water either, so then my end's not, my tip's not uh, getting messed up. <laughs> but yeah, this is uh, just basically done. But like I said, it's a lot of going back and forth until where I really like it. Like at this point, I was really already liking it, but then I went more further and further. And it's just, you know, you gotta find where that line is of what, when you wanna stop. I probably could have stopped sooner, but you know, it's just, that's why we do, we're doing it on cardboard. It's, it's fun, we could see how far we could push um, the, the project, the paint, the color, and see what works. So you add it, you take some of it away by um, adding different colors, and you're really learning on how everything mixes well together. And yeah. So that's where I was going with this. So I used um, True Blue. I used um, the Dark Scarlet. I did for the Bright Reds, which I really love, is the um, Napoleon, um, actually Naffle, Naffle Red, light, uh, Red Light. I used the School Bus Yellow, no actually it was Primary Yellow, apologies, and the White, the Snow White. Um, so I just used all these colors. I was trying to get like a purple that mixed in there too, so I was using the blue and the red together to get a purple. It didn't quite work the way I wanted it to in my mind, but at the same time it did work because I wanted to use all the colors that I was using and not really add a different color. I did at the end kind of add a bit of purple and I didn't really enjoy it so much so I kind of went back over with the blue purpley muck that I made. Okay, so this is it guys. This is kind of my abstract. I'm not sure how much more work I'm going to do on this. I'm just going to add some of my markers and I actually will go with some of my black first. It's very abstract and I really like that. Um, maybe a little too abstract. I was having a lot of fun with this, so. But who can blame, blame me? You can just totally go as realistic or as playful as you want with this. And because this is just a fun cardboard series, I just thought I'd go really, really messy and fun with it. And I'm really, I really enjoyed it. So my paint is still pretty wet. I don't want to ruin my markers, but I'm going to be very careful on how I'm marking it. I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be too precious about the painting either. I do have a spider that I wanted to add here but I might just uh, add that with tissue paper after. I'm not really 100% sure. I'm also gonna add quite a bit. I'm just gonna try to be uh, a little messy with my marker here. Add a little bit of uh, drips and stuff. Because this is supposed to be abstract, so I'm just going to go like that and add a little bit of drips or whatever markings that don't belong, maybe. Here we go. Um, okay. Try to get, I just want to make sure we get this separation here. It's quite a I don't need too much in the way of there it is a little hard to draw with the uh, string back there but it's it's fun so I'm having fun with that so I'll go follow the spring down here and get a little bit of string markings there oops get some of that go back in with my white. I wasn't 100% sure if I was just going to add this white after or add, um, ooh, I got some good drip marks, add some of it now, but, um, so I kind of did a little bit of 
paint because I wasn't sure. I'll sell two. Like my marker half the time doesn't want to work here. So we will see how that works. And there's quite a bit of moist paint here too. So I did try to get as much as I can with the white. I'm going, I dipped it here and I just made a puddle of marker here. It's where I'm going back and forth to kind of to uh, kind of get a pooling effect on some of it here. If I had maybe a straw, I could kind of uh, get that to drip down a little bit more for myself here. So I'm just doing some faux, oh, there's some marker that went flying, faux drip lines, because, oh, there's some. It's not... I'm not really wanting to draw out the best for me here, but that's okay. I'll use that to my advantage as a, just a messy piece. I would have liked these drip marks to look a little bit more natural, but oh, at the same time, I don't want to ruin it. I think I might have put too much. I think I could take it some away. some drips but I don't know if I wanted it quite quite that thick we'll see I always fix it up and now I'm dripping everywhere of course now I got the marks the marker dripping Dripping everywhere. But I still have everything out, so if I want to fix it, I can. Let's see here. This, this is a little on the. I want my thin one. This. Oh, this is not my red. Do I have any red left in here? This one here might be a little bit on the thin, thick. This dripping. And I could just kind of conceal it. I want a little bit more green in here because that's my dark side, my green side. But then I'm going back and forth to fix that up. So the way I want. Now this part could take some time. Oops, I am going to get some paint back here. This part could take some time. That's the one time. To get where exactly I would like it. I think I would like to have probably some white in his eyes to reflect some of the color as well. I'm putting a little touch of green, but I have a mixture of crazy colors and I'm really happy with them. But uh, this is very abstract and that's where I was going for. I wasn't going for a perfect Look, I think it's fun to do abstract every once in a while. Now I have a lot of white, so I don't want to go too crazy in his eyes. I'm just going to go like almost dry brush. I pulled most of it off. And it's even a dirty brush here. I pulled most of it off. And I know I uh, did a speed through this, but it's kind of, that's too much paint. It's kind of how you feel. Like it's not. Um, with it being abstract it's just going how you feel it's not like I could teach you how to you make it look kind of generally like the uh, object that you're going for and then you just kind of work on it like that it's not a perfect rendition of it 
but that's how I use to play with something like this too. I could instead of using a canvas, this is how I like to use the cardboard. I think it gives it good te uh, texture and that kind of thing. And um, I really like it. I'm. I might. I don't know if I want to have darker green on the side here. This is something that I could just kind of play with on and off. I like to have the blue coming through as well. I was going for the blue green. The blue is kind of just, uh, I don't know, but yeah, I got a couple different greens, but uh, we could just play with it like that. But we got the gist of Spidey here, Spider-Man, and um, very abstract, and I like it. So none of it, uh, paper in the background really showed, but I do still have some of the textures that I really like. And I will have to do his spider, and I'm wondering if I could paint that on. And I also think I want to redo his eyes. So that is my Spider-Man. He's very, very abstract. Very fun, though. He's got quite the big eyes, so I'm not sure if I'm happy with how like large they are. But, I mean, it's like I said, it's not a, a perfect rendition of Spider-Man. It's just a fun abstract. And I thought I would do a few of these. Maybe do all the Avengers eventually. Um, not scheduled, like, you know, but just have fun with it. And have these pieces done. I really like to have even more drip marks, maybe, of the black. I might fake some. You know, and that might be too thick in there, but I can fix that. Could maybe even add more darkness back here. I don't know if I want to add too dark, like with the black. I did add just a little bit here. See with, if I blend it in with the green. Just not sure what color I want to use back there, but. No matter what, if I don't like it, I could always add, I'm going to show you more layers. So say I didn't like the, the green so much, I'm just going to go back in with some of that tur um, burgundy red and mixing it in, it's just looking really dark and good. So there's really no, you still got that Spider-Man look, you know, but you got hints of green popping up, which is super nice. And you can go brighter if you want to pop up a little bit here and there, which I love. And sometimes you want to grab a bit of a color that you have on one end and add it to another end, bring it together. I've got quite a layer of colors here. Anyways, I'm just going back and forth and I'm not checking what I like. kind of like the green better. The blue just does not. But now I added things I'm not sure I like, just because I was showing you, but... But it, uh, it's very abstract, so... There we go. The flavor of Spider-Man. Gee, some of that might... Keep adding colors till I'm happy. But that's about that. Uh, I uh, am pretty much done with this guy, I think. I will add um, some 
uh, varnish to it. It's probably a flat varnish or something. We'll see how I like it. And that's it. Thanks, guys, for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. I will show you a dried, done piece at the end. Thanks, guys. Bye. Don't forget to crap like a duck.